Well, it's just going whenever you're ready um, to start off. And okay. Yeah. All right. Welcome, Bartlett Hills, and those of you who are joining us from wherever you may be. Uh, we are studying the uh, book of Romans this particular quarter, and we're on a set of verses entitled Citizens. This is chapter three. If you want to go ahead and get your Bibles out and join us, chapter three in the book of Romans, we're going to go straight through verses one through 14. I always like to talk about the book of, the book that we're interested in and where it came from. So in this situation, of course, this is the Old Testament, uh, actually the New Testament book of Romans or the New Testament um, journey of Paul the Apostle. And so you'll notice here that Paul has written this book, the book of Romans, but he's not really in Rome. Paul's actually right here in Corinth. He wrote the book about A.D. 56 or 57, some couple of couple of decades after Jesus' death, and he's on his way in his second missionary journey to Jerusalem to bring a love offering to those who are suffering there. And of course, as Paul is wont to do, he always writes to the churches uh, in the Roman provinces to try to encourage new believers, and he wishes someday to go to Rome. And of course, we know that someday he does go to Rome, and Christian tradition tells us that he's martyred there, but Jesus, but Paul is going to travel to Rome, and before he gets there, he sends a letter to the Romans to try to encourage them, uh, the new believers in Jesus. So that's where we are today. And last week, if you recall, Brother Rasback was leading us in a set of lessons from chapter 12, and it was about sacrifices. That was the title of it, and the gist of it was to be a living sacrifice. So go about your daily lives as Jesus would, uh, loving one another and showing love to those around you, being a sacrifice, being somebody who models Christian behavior. Well, today we're in a set of lessons entitled Citizens, and the topic here says that believers should seek to represent Christ well in their community and world, and we're going to be in three sets of verses. The first set of verses is going to be entitled Submit, and then we'll talk about love, and then we'll talk about Anticipate. So here we go. Chapter 13 in the book of Romans, verse 1. So it says, let everyone, Paul says, let everyone submit to the governor authorities, since there is no authority except from God, and the authorities that exist are instituted by God. So we as Christians should submit to those in our government because they are ultimately set up by God. God is the supreme authority and he sets up our ambassadors and our congressmen and our councilmen and our presidents and governance over us. So we should submit to them because ultimately our leaders in government are set up by God. So then the one who resists the authority is actually opposing God's command, and those who oppose it will bring judgment on themselves. So, of course, resisting authority will get you in trouble with the law. We've seen this for speeding uh, and for other infractions that we do throughout our daily lives, but that's not exactly what Paul is talking about here. When he talks about bringing judgment on themselves, he's talking about specifically God's judgment. We should obey the laws because when we openly defy or are disobedient against those who have been placed above us, we risk the danger of God's judgment since he has put these folks in, in authority over us. So it says, for rulers are not a terror to God, but to, or sorry, for rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Here's the second reason Paul gives us for obeying our government authorities. Not only should we obey because God placed those in power above us, but also because they help to maintain order in God's world. Rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. They help to maintain order in God's world. So do you want to be unafraid of the one in authority of God? Then do what is good and you will have its approval. This is a sentiment you hear a lot when folks are uh, arrested for resisting arrest or when your teacher sends you to detention at school, right? Generally, that sentiment is, well, why didn't you just do what the uh, officer asked you to do? Well, why didn't you just do what your teacher asked you to do? Do you want to be unafraid of the one in authority? Then do what is good and you will have its approval. So people who obey good and fair laws have nothing to fear from God ordained authorities. And that's the key here. What we're talking about is God has placed those in governance above us. And since he's the ultimate authority, we should submit to those. But of course, that's always if they're in keeping with the morals and the directives of God himself. For it, and again, it is referring to our government. It is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, 
be afraid because it does not carry the sword for no reason. It's just a negative response to what Paul is talking about. There is a reason why the law is the way it is. The law has been set up to punish those that are evil. It's set up by God to do so. For it, the government again, is God's servant, an avenger that brings wrath on the one who does wrong. Therefore, you must submit not only because of wrath, but be also because of your conscience. So this is the third reason Paul has given us to submit to those who are placed in authority above us. The first reason we should submit is because God himself placed them in power over us. He's the ultimate authority. Secondly, we should submit to those in leadership above us because they maintain God's order. And thirdly, as Paul says, we should submit to those in authority above us because it helps us to maintain a clear conscience. Some people seem to get away with crimes, but as Christians, we know we can never get away with it. We obey the law. We do what's right because we can keep a clear conscience. You might get away with it in this lifetime, but God and the Holy Spirit will be uh, tapping at your heartstrings a lot. You can never get away with it. Okay, all for this reason, because of our conscience, you pay taxes since the authorities are God's servants continually attending to these tasks. And that's the task of maintaining order in God's world. So pay your obligations to everyone. Now let's take this in context. By everyone, I think he's talking about the government again, right? So pay your obligations to everyone in government. Taxes to those you owe taxes to. Does that ring a bell, paying taxes? Well, Sure, Jesus has talked about it before. Remember, he sent Peter to go fishing. The temple tax was due and he needed two coins to pay it, so he told Peter to go fishing. When you catch your fish, you'll find two coins that will pay our taxes. So we are to model Jesus' behavior. Pay your government obligations, taxes to those you owe taxes to, and of course, as he goes on to say, Paul, tolls to those who you owe tolls to, respect to those you owe respect, and honor to those you owe honor. So as Christians, we should give thanks and pray for our governing authorities. You may not disagree with some of them. You may not have even voted for some of them in America. But as Christians, there's a proper way to voice those disagreements. They give honor and respect to them as leaders appointed by God. So there's a couple of things to think about. Uh, are there any circumstances where we should not obey our governing authorities? I wish we were together and have a good time discussing what the Lord had put on our hearts to talk about these particular issues. But I know there's one particular instance where Paul was ordered not to preach. And of course, we can't, he couldn't do that because that was one of God's directives for his life. So there are certain situations where, where we are not to obey governing authorities. And that would be when those go against God's will for us. So think about the, that with those that are around you uh, looking at this particular lesson as we go through Romans 13. The other thing maybe to think about is what are some practical things we should be doing to submit to our God-given authorities? How about doing our pandemic? Again, I wish we were together to talk about, well, should we be meeting at church? Should we be wearing our, uh, in this case, Hulk? Should be we wearing our Hulk mask as, a, as the authorities tell us to? Okay. Some things to talk about with those Christians around you. Particularly, I would encourage you to find uh, a mature Christian and have these conversations with them. So let's keep going. Second set of verses is entitled, Love. So Paul continues this analogy of owing monetary debts and tolls. He says, do not owe anyone anything except to love one another. As Christians, we have one debt, one obligation that never ends. When he's talking about don't owe anyone anything, don't miss that obligation. But we know as Christians we can never fulfill that one obligation, and that obligation is to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law, has actually accomplished the law. We know the law can't be accomplished. That debt can never really be paid. We can't ever really fulfill it enough, that obligation we know to one another to love. But as Jesus encourages us, we should try. So Paul then reiter reiterates what he means by the law. Of course, we know what the law means. We know the law means the Ten Commandments. And specifically what Paul's talking about is the last six commandments that deal with our interactions with one another. Honor thy father and thy mother. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. 
Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. And of course, thou shalt not covet. So Paul goes on to talk about it. He says the commandments, the Ten Commandments, specifically do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not covet, and any of the other commandments that have to do with our relationships with one another are summed up by this commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself, because love does no wrong to a neighbor. Love, therefore, is the fulfillment of a law. All the commandments having to do with our relationships can be summed up by these three words. All the law, this is the math teacher in me, added together, all of the laws added together is love. All the commandments having to do with these relationships can be summed up in just these three words, love one another. Because Jesus calls us to go above and beyond the commandments. Get to the heart of the command. Don't just obey the commandments as a sign of obedience of God because he told you to, but God wants you to obey the commandments because you share God's love for others. Go above and beyond. Not just obey, but obey at the heart of the situation, which is out of love for each other. And I think about it this way. I think about it as we're driving along. We've got those who use their blinkers and those that don't. Those that don't use their blinkers would be those who don't have relationships with God. They're not worried about each other. They're only worried about themselves. And then you have maybe the Pharisee approach where they change lanes and they use their blinker as they're moving left and right. Well, that's the letter of the law, but not necessarily the spirit of the law. The spirit of God's laws is to, for the relationships to be perfect and pure between all of us. And so a Christian mindset might be to put your blinker on, to look around and make sure everyone around you is safe, and then to move, okay? Also think about uh, using these things again, right? Why, do we, why are we wearing our mask, our mask in the time of the coronavirus? Well, some of us don't. Some of us refuse. It's, it's a burden. Um, I don't think it really helps. I don't think I have to. I know the government tells me to when I go out, but I, I don't want to. And then there are those of us who wear these masks because they want to keep themselves safe. But really, a Christian mindset would be, I'm going to wear my mask, my Hulk mask. I'm going to wear my mask because I want you to be safe from me. I love you. If In case I have the coronavirus, I don't want you to get it. So I'm going to wear my mask. Going at the heart of what the commandments are, and they're about our relationships between one another. Show love to one another. So some other things to think about. Uh, what motivates you, sorry, what motivates you uh, to obey those in leadership? What motivates you to obey the laws? Is it Christian love for one another? I, our last set of verses here. Last set of verses is on anticipate. So besides this, moreover also, as well as, since you know the time, and the time that he's talking about is the age in which we live, which in our age, you know what's happening around us with COVID-19, with wars in the world, with violence between all of us. Since you know the time, it is already the hour for you to wake up from sleep. And by waking up from sleep, he's talking about you becoming spiritually aware. Because now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. And that is true. We don't necessarily know the time and the place in which Jesus will return, but we know that each day that we live is one day closer to his return. So in keeping with that, the night is nearly over. Our, the age in which we live is nearly over. And the day is near, the light, the coming of Jesus. So let us discard the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. And Paul's going to go on to explain what the deeds of darkness really are. So let us walk with decency as in the daytime. And whenever we hear the words walk as a Christian, we always think about our Christian walk. So he's talking about in our daily walk, in our lives, as we go about living uh, our day-to-day -day operations, think about the way you're walking. Think about the way you're living and do it in decency. Do it in the light. Do it as Jesus has modeled for us. Not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual impurity and promiscuity, not in quarreling and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Jesus wants you to live like he lived and don't open yourself up to the temptations of this life that lead you into sin. 
Let us walk with decency, as in the daytime. We don't know when Jesus is coming back. It could be any time, and truth of the matter is, every day that we live is one day closer to his return. So in keeping with that thought, let's live honest lives between one another, loving one another as Jesus loved all of us. So, some things to think about. Uh, why submit to go governing authorities? Uh, why love one another? Why start doing that now? Because every day, again, is one day closer to Jesus' return. As Christians, we want to be ready to be right with God when that day does come. So as the old commercial used to say, don't put it off, put it on. And I wish I could remember if that was a car commercial or not, but I think I was too young to really grasp what was going on. But don't put it off, put it on, anticipate. So let's wrap it up. So we had three sets of verses here. Believers should seek to represent Christ well in their community and world. And first off, we should submit. Believers should honor their government and its leaders by being model citizens. And their second set of verses was entitled, Love. So believers should demonstrate Christ-like love to all people, especially to other Christians. And we should anticipate. Believers should live holy lives in anticipation of the return of Christ. Again, I thank you for joining us with Bartlett Hills and all of you who may not be from our church. I appreciate you tuning in today. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, I hope you would pray with us um, and let, well, gather around and let me pray for you. So if you wouldn't mind, bow your heads with me, please. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your words today through Paul about uh, respecting and showing love to those around us and respecting those in authority. And Heavenly Father, we do pray in our time of quarantine, of COVID-19, we pray for our, our leaders in the world, Lord, our president, our mayors, our governors, our councilmen, Heavenly Father, our senators, our congressmen. Lord, we pray that you um, impose upon them your will, Heavenly Father, so they might uh, be in accordance with your guidelines and guiding us, uh, imposing upon us your rules and your laws for us, Heavenly Father. Lord, I pray that we continue to grow and mature spiritually as Christians as we hear your word, Heavenly Father. Stay close with us, Lord, so we might lean upon you where we need, uh, when we need your love, Lord, and support, we might, where we might need your guidance. And all these things I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.